Okay. All Good right. Work. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Hi again. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just going to start <laughs> down through this list in no particular order. We have just a handful of clubs that have not paid their RI dues. Let me see if I can bring up the list. That haven't paid their RI dues that were due January the 1st. I'm going to share my screen and you'll be able to see which ones they are. Okay. Rick, can you give me permission to share? I think I just did. Okay, let's see. Yes, you did. Okay, let me find it right here. Can you all see that? No, yep. we can't. I yep. can't. You I can can't. See it. Okay. Oops. Those are the six clubs that have not paid as of Friday. Now, as I go down through here, let me shed some light on some of these. Columbia, I've already talked to Katie and that that's taken care of. It's not paid yet, but it's taken care of. Carrollton, um, when we were at Pets, I gave David the invoice for Carrollton because he's their AG and he was going to reach out to them. So I'm hopeful that that one will be taken care of. Elkton surprises me because they always pay on time. And I'm thinking it may just be a matter of confusion where they didn't understand that RI bills them in two increments. And Dawson Springs, Passport, and Inhuman Trafficking. I don't know. Well, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Dawson Springs, the president-elect was at Pets, and I sent the invoice for that club home with her. So really, the only ones that are mysteries are Elkton, the Passport, in the end human trafficking clubs. And Nancy, you and I talked about passport at uh, uh, at pets, and I have tried a couple of times since then to reach Christine without any response whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I have not tried to get a hold of, uh, of the human trafficking club. I can do that pretty easily. Okay, all right, Rick, if you'll do that, and I've actually got to schedule a club visit to Elkton because they have their very first major donor in the history of the club. Wow. Um, just within the past few months. So I was going to go down and present his major donor award to him. Yeah. So I can take care of Elkton and Columbia. Rick, if you'll do in human trafficking and passport, and we'll work together. I'll work on basketball. I'll try again. Okay. And then Carrollton and Dawson Springs, those don't belong to any of you guys. Uh, so, can you hear me? Yes. That's John. Is it John? Yes. Yeah. Hey, John. I'll, I'll check with Dawson Springs. Perfect. And John, did you hear me say that when we were at Pets, the president-elect um, was there from Dawson Springs, and I gave her a copy of the invoice? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah. good. And, and, well, I'll tell you what, if, if they haven't paid in a you know reasonable time, amount of time, let me know, and I'll follow up on them. Okay. Honestly, I hadn't checked this past week, and this is a list that R.I. sent to me on Friday. So, okay. Well, it sounds like we've got that knocked out. Um, they can pull the invoice down off Rotary International's, out of my Rotary, but I also have copies of their invoices because I took them all to pets with me. So Rick, I'll send you passport and inhuman trafficking. Okay. So get those and can forward them on. John, I'll send you the Dawson Springs invoice. And then we'll have to just reach out to Dave and see if 
what kind of response he got from Carrollton. Because of course, in the you know the worst case, all right, could pull the charter for these clubs that don't pay. So okay, so that's number one, and I'm going to get up and close my door just a second. Hang on. Of course, it is tax season here, and it's just like a madhouse out there. <laughs> okay, any questions about that? Very good. If not, I'm going to move into the second group of items, which have to do with district conference. The registration is now open. Let's see, a new share. Let me share another screen with you all. Oh, where is it? Oh, I've got a, let me see. Here it is right here. Can you guys see that? It's the proposed schedule for district conference. Let me rattle on about this for just a couple of minutes. We sent this proposed schedule to me yesterday. So it hasn't been published anywhere yet, but in looking at it, it's, it's pretty tight. There'll be some additions, um, but for the most part, this gives you a good overview of, of what we've got planned for district conference. The registration is open and Lee sent out um, emails to everyone so that they could register with their own personal link. Of course, the registration is done through DACDB. The hotel block of rooms is good for this is we're going to do it. It says Thursday through Friday, but it's actually just Friday and Saturday. But the hotel has made their room block price available for, I think, three days before the conference and three days after the conference. So when you go into the registration site, you're going to see that the uh, information about the hotel being available for like over a week. And that was confusing to me, but it was just because they extended their block. The early bird registration is $99 and that ends on April 20th. Then the registration goes to 129. So 99 is a pretty good, pretty good deal um, for this conference. It's going to be different than anything else you've ever experienced. Travis Keller is uh, my district conference chair and he is just just such an amazing, um, talented, creative thinker. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff that, that we put together for the conference. The conference opens on Friday. Well, it actually opens Friday at lunch. The general session, uh, first general session starts at 1130. But we're going to try something different this year. <clears throat> In the Bowling Green area, the Bowling Green clubs have two different disaster grant projects that they did in cooperation with each other, but also with the city of Bowling Green, students and faculty at Western Kentucky University. I mean, this was just a huge collaborative <laughs> effort. And we are going to, for the first 50 people that sign up for this, and of course there's no extra cost, this cost is included in your $99 or $129. For the first 50 people that sign up, Bernie's plan is to get one of the WKU buses and we're actually going to take a field trip, a site visit to those two, to the sites of those two um, disaster grant programs. And during that, excuse me, during that time from eight to 11, those three hours, 
it will also, it'll be more than just a site visit field trip kind of thing because Bernie and the folks from WKU and uh, the city officials will be there to share and explain how they uh, came about and how they handled, how they did this collaboration. So I'm really excited about that. At, um, at International Conference, International Convention, they always have pre-convention workshops where you can go for some specific topic, um, maybe peace, and get an in-depth in look at something related to that topic. Well, that's what I wanted to do, was to offer a pre-conference event that would really shine a light on something unusual that has gone on in these collaborative district disaster grant projects, I think fill that, that meet that criteria very well. But it's only open to the first 50 people that sign up simply because that's the capacity of the bus. Once you get the, you know, everybody else on there, the faculty and city people and um, people from Bowling Green Rotary, we're only going to be able to accommodate the first 50 people that sign up. So I think that is something really neat to share around as you talk to your clubs. Uh, let's see, we've got, <clears throat> we start at lunch on Friday, have breakouts through the afternoon. Then at four o'clock, we have a uh, dinner and a live auction. And Travis has a um, professional auctioneer who specializes in raising money for nonprofits who's, who's going to do the auction. And it, it promises to be just a really exciting event. At that same time, we've talked about doing a silent auction where we could have the clubs bring in items, you know, baskets, whatever. We're, we're still kind of fleshing that out but we could have a silent auction going on at the same time. Um, and that's similar to what we've done the past couple of years at district conference. Then after dinner at six o'clock, we are leaving the convention center, which by the way, this is at Sloan convention center. We are leaving the convention center and we are going downtown in, uh, to Bowling Green's Capital Arts Theater and we're gonna spend the evening there. We are going to have um, a speaker who is a humanitarian. He is, uh, uh, he makes film documentaries. He is an inspiring, uplifting, we can change the world kind of speaker. That's that's kind of message he brings. Um, and we're going to arrive there at, at in time to start at seven o'clock. And we're actually going to screen his latest documentary. And then he's going to talk about uh, leadership and service and how each one basically have it within us to make such an impact on our world. And, I, you know, that, of course, is at no charge because that's included and the price of your registration, but we will spend the evening there at the uh, Capital Arts Center. We should be done by between 8.30 and 9. At that time, the major donors will have a special reception there at the Capital Arts Theater, kind of a behind the curtain um, reception where the major donors will stay and we've got some special things planned for them. Everybody else will go back to the convention center uh, and we'll have a, a cash bar open with music and games. And Brett is going to come back to the convention center to spend some time in that, uh, in that event, that uh, fellowship, uh, hospitality room, if you will, with everybody. So, I think Friday is going to be super, super, super special from the field trip in the morning through the offsite event that evening. Um, 
something different for our major donors, and then the hospitality reception that evening. Um, Saturday, we start at 7.30 in the morning. We're going to have breakfast. So I'm, I must say, when you register for conference this year, you're going to get lunch, dinner, breakfast, and a second lunch. So it's four meals. Um, we'll have to, our first session on Saturday will be TED Talks. And they'll cover just a variety of inspiring topics. Um, then we have a general session at lunch, or we have a general session that will be the speech contest championship round. You know, normally that speech contest is relegated to a room somewhere off in the hotel or the convention center and just attended really by uh, a limited number of people. And this year, we thought that we would showcase the speech contest championship round. So that will actually be our general session before lunch on Saturday. Then after a short break, we will have our general session number six, which is our luncheon. And that keynote address will be delivered by Travis's dad, Ray Keller, who is an um inspirational motivational speaker he travels the world and gets five and six figure speaker fees that of course we don't have to pay for because he's travis's dad so he'll he will be wonderful to hear um we'll do the awards then tommy that's when we'll change leadership of the district and you'll have to listen to me for just very short <laughs> time as i say my goodbyes um and then uh our college of governors will meet at the end so we're hoping to be done by one o'clock on saturday so it's pretty ambitious but i think i think that we can do it and we can get everybody out uh fairly early in the afternoon and tommy i was thinking with the grant training we might do that Saturday afternoon after after lunch, after the general session is over, while the College of Governors okay. is meeting. I'm thinking I'll talk to Travis, but I'm thinking that might be a good time to do uh, the last session of the district grant training. OK, so that's certification. At, so it'll be at about 1.30? I, I would say so. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Travis, but I, I don't see why we can't just tack that on at the end for those people that that need to attend. Now, I have flown through now, that. Hey, what questions have you guys got? Uh, number one question that everybody has, are all these times central? Very good question. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are prevailing local time, which is central. Yeah, we need to add that, Tommy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Put that down here at the bottom. Uh, and then secondly, on the, uh, on the certification for grants and stuff, uh, we're going to make them uh, register for the conference, right? Yes, yes. Yes, we are. And if you all have any trouble um, finding the the link for registration that Lee sent out, you can reach out to Lee. Certainly, let me know. I know it will be put out again in the spectrum. But mm -hmm. she, everybody, should look for an email that she sent out uh, at the end of last week. And and it's on DAC D DAC D B in the calendar. Yes, that's right, Rick. I think that's the easiest way to get to it is to log into DACDB and go to the calendar um, for May the 12th and 13th. And we are going to do something special with women in Rotary. Were there any more questions? I'm sorry. I just no, moved when, right along. When will the content of the breakout sessions be determined? We've already got those pretty well fleshed out, um, Rick. So I would say, Lee sent this to me today. So I would say by the end of the week. Okay. 
she'll have it finalized and ready to go. Um, women in Rotary. Something that I have talked about in each of my club visits and that I really want to acknowledge at this district conference are the contributions of women in Rotary. You know, particularly because this is the year when we have our first Rotary International president. So I'm still, uh, I've got some ideas in my head about how I want to do that recognition. But I really need, for this to work, I really need for the clubs to submit something about a woman Rotarian you know, living, deceased, doesn't matter, but a woman Rotarian who has had a significant special impact in their club. And when you look at the information that Dale has sent out about awards, there is actually a link to that the clubs can click on to submit their information about women in Rotary. So let me find that right here. Can you guys see that? Yes. I just clipped this from the email that Dale sent um, where he lets everybody know uh, that we're uh, now open to accept awards. And by the way, I'll come back to the awards, but let me show you this. Right here at the very bottom where it says you can also find the link to the nomination form for your club's women in, Woman in Rotary on the awards page. You can click here, go to the awards page, and then they can upload their information or they can simply email it to me if they want to. <laughs> to put this uh, presentation together, I would love to have this information by the, the 1st of April. Now, admittedly, that's next week, I think. And that is probably not going to be doable for these clubs who haven't even started to think about who they would like to nominate but if you all could reach out to each of your clubs and make sure they do that, tell them by April 1st, but I think that we can go through the end of that first week in April and still be able to get this presentation put together. And what they'll do when they go to the awards page, they'll actually be directed to a jot form that they fill out and submit just like they were applying for um, one of the district awards. Hey, Dorsey. Okay, hello. so. Hello. How are you? Well, running late, but. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna apologize to you in advance because I told everybody I'm gonna go through this at breakneck speed because I've got a whole page of stuff. Um, Got it. No problem. So thank you all for your indulging me. So women in Rotary, if we could get it by April 1st, that would be fantastic. But admittedly, we can give them another week if we need to. Um, in that same vein, you'll see here that April 20th is the deadline for basically everything this year. And the reason for that is we have RILA the first weekend in May. Derby weekend is RILA. And for us to get all of the district conference uh, work done and then free Lee up so that she can do what needs to be done for RILA before she bounces back into the district conference, we had to set April 20th as a deadline. So that that is you know, a week or so earlier than what we normally have, but I'm afraid this will be a hard deadline because with what we put on leash, she won't be able to do this 
if she doesn't have it by April 20th, she's not going to be able to get done before she has to immerse herself in arrival. Um, so April 20th is a deadline for awards applications for the $99 early bird registration and also for that special hotel room block rate. And I think that's $149. I meant to look at my own registration and I didn't. So the big thing there is April 20th is a hard deadline. And of course, Dale uh, Leatherman is in charge of the awards this year. So any questions that you all have about that, uh, certainly you're welcome to ask me or ask Lee, but Dale is the, the guy to go to. All right, any questions about all that? Hey, Gail. I am so glad to see Gail because she can help with two of the other topics that are on my list. But before we get to those, let me tell you that our district, we are going to have a district directory this year. And it will be in the same format as our last one, kind of, a, this is my governor uh, directory, but it will be spiral bound this, this size. And it's really gonna be um, quite a document that Lee has put together this year because we weren't able to have the traditional directories in due to COVID in Joanne's year or Gail's year. So we wanted this directory really to be a historical document that would record for our district's posterity the events and that happened in the district from the time we were shut down with COVID through the end of my governor year. So we will have a section in there about uh, significant events in Gail's year when she was district governor. We'll have another section of significant events that occurred in Joanne's year when she was district governor. And then uh, we'll bring out some of the highlights of, of what we've done this year plus the usual um, oh, just information about the clubs and our district operations manual. So it, it's, it is practically ready. I'm, I'm waiting to see the last draft probably tomorrow. But let me tell you how we're gonna do the directory this year. We have a printer that will print it on demand and um, as I understand it, the price is most likely going to be $17 plus the shipping. The great thing about that is people can order their um, directory online and it's printed and shipped to you. That way the district doesn't have to pay for a lot of directories to be prepared that you know might languish in a box somewhere. So, Lee will be getting out more information about that, but just make your clubs aware that we are gonna have district directories again this year and that they will be available for purchase. And I think I may have some of them, have her go ahead and make up some of them that we can have at district conference where people can buy those mm -hmm. at, at the district conference. So what do y'all think? Any questions? No? We're doing good. It's 3.32. Hey, Gail. The next two things on my list, I'm going to kind of hand off to you. Um, and they are Ryla and the disaster that's just occurred in Mississippi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I hope everybody's doing great. Awesome. Um, yesterday, um, 
most of you who are on the RILA committee, thank you, Michael Parker's already signed up to be a team leader. Um, I sent out a reminder and the live links for everyone to um, get that out to the presidents, president-elect, youth service people, um, assistant governors, um, just to make sure. Right now we have two participants that have already registered. We have 16 leaders. So we're not doing terrible for the moment. We're six weeks out from Ryla, uh, but I'm going to start pushing and people are going to start not being happy with me and not wanting to hear from me and they'll see my email and they won't open it. Um, <clears throat> so I just want you to go back to the clubs and say it's Ryla time. Make sure that uh, you get your students registered and please, please, please consider volunteering. I think based on what we have um, committed so far, we'll have about 14 adults there, um, but that includes the DG line and we don't ask them to work there. They're our judges. So we're going to be a short, we're going to be short a few. So I still need 15 or so. So we're still looking for another seven or eight adults to come and be team leaders. Um, we'll have the participants. We always do. It's a great time. And a lot of the clubs have been very excited about it and keep asking me about when is it and can we send our kids. Um, it is on Derby weekend this year. It's May 4th through the 7th. Um, that could be a problem for some. Um, it is also around the same time as some proms and some graduations and some and some and some and some. And some. Uh, but that always happens. So you just plan it, you uh, stick in a date and you go for it. And so that's what we've done. And hopefully we'll have a great um, crowd. We will be doing Love the Hungry again this year because that is a passion of our district governor elect, uh, Tommy Reed. So we're going to be doing that again. Last year, we started that tradition with Nancy and we did polio bears last year. Um, so I've asked Dale Leatherman to get his thinking cap on and Dorsey, you might as well start thinking about it as well, because we do a, a service project in honor of your passion. And um, so we're real excited about that. Um, and that's it. Does anyone have any questions about Ryla? Gail, maybe you said it and I was thinking about something else, but what are the time, what timelines are you working on? How, what's the deadline for people to sign up to to be volunteers? I don't really have one. The only problem with that is with Alan Gaddis getting the shirts and all of the swag ready, but we do have extra. So every year we always have extra. So I have sets of that kind of stuff setting aside just in case. Um, we like to have, we, um, the, the facility likes to have the number about two weeks ahead, but if we don't, that's fine. Uh, I never want to turn away anyone. No. So we can set the date at two weeks before the event just to give them um, a, a number of because they, they have to be prepared for food uh, for the kids that are coming. But really, we can supplement it um, up until the last minute. I've had people call me the day of and I'm like, yeah, bring them on. <laughs> I got a shirt for them. They'll be fine. So, you know, if, if you're two weeks before Derby weekend, Rila weekend, that would be like April 21st. That's right. So, and we've got April 20th as a hard deadline for awards and early bird registration and uh, hotel registration. So we it could also be kind Rila of too. a deadline yeah. for Rila. Yeah. Makes it easy to remember because everything's deadlining at the same time. That's right. That's right. Gail, if you want to, you can put me on the gray team and I'll bring my three t-shirts already. <laughs> okay, you're gray. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I think I'm gray too, so I'll be happy to jump in there again. We had a great team. We had a great team. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Next up is my second passion, which is disaster relief. And the governor and I had conversation this weekend because Mississippi was hit just like Western Kentucky in, in some very small rural areas, but that have been completely devastated. So she has asked that we lead the charge um, to gather some funding to send uh, to the communities that were, were devastated by the tornado. And here's, here's the truth. We talked about this. We have time to do this. 
So um, they're, they're not going to need us or the money for several months, uh, probably up to 90 days. So we have time to have a campaign uh, through to the district conference, which would be a great time for Nancy to be able to uh, award those districts with whatever we can collect. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Um, you're going to be hearing from me. I'm going to be putting stuff in the spectrum, asking. I mean, I don't care if every Rotarian just gave us $5. That would be great. Yes. Um, yeah. Mississippi gave us $25,400 when our tornado hit. Um, wasn't It wasn't from specific Rotary Clubs, but we got it from a foundation where Rotarians are a part of that. And then two, uh, personal <laughs> donations of $200 apiece. So $25,400 came out of Mississippi when our tornadoes hit. It's time to just pay back a little. Even if we could get a dollar, it would be great. So I'm going to be making a push. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to take away from polio giving or from um, the shared fund or annual fund giving. Uh, but we really do make. We really will make a difference in people's lives if we do this. Um, I saw the aerial views of those areas, and it just reminded me of Dawson Springs and Mayfield. They're yes. completely destroyed. Completely destroyed, yes. and they've had lots of loss of life there. Um, so if you'll kind of get back to your clubs and ask them to please do that, I'm going to be getting with Ralph and, um, Sheila, because I think the best place to put it is over in okay. the disaster relief fund that we have, but in a separate account for Mississippi, and then we'll just out of our foundation donate, uh, to them, uh, for that, for whatever we get. Um, so you'll be hearing from me uh, and from my heart to make a difference in a world that has been destroyed. Uh, they're going to need us and um, time to come. And you can ask Mayfield, Dawson Springs, all these other places. Yes. They're still rebuilding and we're into our second year getting ready, approaching our second year in December. So we have time. We have time to make a difference. It's not urgent, but it would be great to have it for Nancy at district conference so yes. uh, that she can make a presentation or let let everyone know what, what a success mm -hmm. we've been and that we're giving and making a difference. And, you know, I talked to the district governor in District 6820, which is like the central part of Mississippi, and he was actually in, is it Rolling Fork? Is mm -hmm. that Rolling that? Fork. Mm -hmm. Rolling yeah. Fork is the town that was, it's like a town of 2,200 people. It's about the size of Greensburg, actually. It was just almost completely wiped off the map. And he said the needs are so great. And, you know, Gail and I said, well, let's look and see how much they sent to us, which is where those amounts came from that you shared. But I started thinking later that, you know, it really doesn't matter what they sent to us because we know, we know what it's like to, to, to be devastated by those tornadoes. And we, we were, we were the recipient of so much um, benevolence and goodwill we have to pay it on. We just, we simply have to. So I feel like Rotarians in our district probably will be very responsive to this because it's right on the heels of, of when the relief was coming into uh, Western and Central Kentucky. So Gail, I appreciate you for so, so many things, but once again, I'll appreciate your disaster expertise and, you know, guiding us toward getting some money together uh, that we can send down there to them. You're so welcome. And we will make a difference. We will. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Anybody so, have any questions about that? Disaster relief. Okay, good. Just send a check. <laughs> <laughs> or two. <laughs> or two or three or five. <laughs> um. That's actually the end of my list. I did think of one more thing. Our district matching points campaign is done. And 
you know, that generates a, um, a fairly good amount of uh, donations coming from the clubs to the annual fund because a lot of clubs wait until the, uh, we have the matching points campaign to raise their money, uh, you know, and uh, make it available for Paul Harris fellowships um, with points being matched. So with that being said, I'm gonna watch the numbers, uh, the contributions that come in from the clubs here within the next week or so, week or 10 days. And then I'll be reaching out to those clubs who look like they need to ramp up their giving before the end of the year. Primarily those that have been star clubs in the past that maybe are not quite yet at that $100 per Rotarian limit, you know, I will call them myself and just say, do you realize that your grant funding is going to be so much greater if you can get over that $100 per person hurdle um, as you have in the past? So you may hear from your clubs, the governor called me asking for money. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she gently, she called to gently push that they um, get their per person average just as high as they can so that we can have more star clubs and put more district grant money out there. So that's it for me. What say you all? Well, I just want to remind those people that were at uh, MS Pets that I'm going to do an article and put in spectrum. And I want you to remember, it was just said by Nancy, I had a full page cartoon for my PEs. And that cartoon, St. Peter wasn't letting anybody in until they made an extra contribution to, to the foundation. So. <laughs> that's, that's some incentive, Tommy. <laughs> Well, if that's all I have to do to get into heaven, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Just support the foundation. That's right. <laughs> Service above self, right. <laughs> well, Tommy, anything you want to say about pets? Because you've got a lot of returning AGs and um, I'm yeah, asking you the question. It, it was wonderful. It was absolutely probably the best pets I have ever been to. And and I think that uh, we are, uh, like I said, when I'm going to be talking to those ones that missed it, okay, you know, one of, one of the things that I'm going to uh, talk about is all the good programs that we had and not just the speakers, but, you know, the one-on-one -on -one contributions that you know everybody got to make to, to I mean if a, one PE had a great idea and he was giving it to another PE that was searching for an answer then you know, you, you learn from that so it's just you know, the fact that you were networking with people that you met people that hey you know uh, this guy has the same problems that I have whatever it might be so for those people that were there, they got a lot out of it. And of course, I do, I do need to ask, uh, I don't know if just this committee or any of our committees, but uh, is it okay for me to put a thank you to Heaven Hill in my spectrum? So, so he Heaven Hill was the one that gave me all the little miniatures. <laughs> I, I, I would think so. What do you think, Gail? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. I, because that, that was one of the hits of the, yeah. <laughs> of the pets. <laughs> Booze brings them together. Well, That's right. right. <laughs> yeah, everybody was looking for Tommy. Where's Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the only thing that I figured out later, if I would have yeah. saved a lot of those yeah. bottle fill, the Saturday part of the, uh, uh, so then I would have, we would have had a lot more people staying to Saturday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But now, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm working on my little. Uh, if you want to get them, my spec article, somebody needs to we'll talk about, you know, not, not only what we learned, but the good time that we had. Can, can you guys mute yourself if you're not talking? Because we're picking up some background noise. Thank you. So, Tommy, how many PEs did you have? Uh, I had somebody calling me on uh, the day before we got there saying that they were going to get there. I'm not 100% sure, but it wasn't over 30. And we've got 55 clubs. So it, it looks like it's going to be a, uh, somewhere around the 20, 20th, 21st of April that I will do a Zoom. And uh, I will talk to you know, all the PEs that missed it that, uh, you know, we're going to have a Zoom, and uh, there probably will be a, a video of some of the speeches because uh, uh, Linda and Debbie, they said that they could get me some of the speakers, some of the video of the speakers. Oh, and good. So uh, we're going to have a Zoom, and it's going to be, you know, make up for the peas. You know, and the other critical thing before the end of the year is the grant training, mm -hmm. making sure that those clubs, um, that all the clubs are certified to receive a district grant. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, that's, you know, we're, you're going to do that at the district conference and hopefully that'll get everybody that needs to be certified, you know, talk to Ralph about it and he, he thought that, you know, he and Jen could get together and do it. And, and like I said, I just said, if we can do it at district conference, that would be the best yes. place to do it. Yes, that would be one kind of a last ditch effort. And Tommy, you might think about if you could, um, as we get closer to that, get together a list of the clubs that have been trained I, or haven't been trained, as the case may be, and we can reach out to them uh, individually. Yeah. I, I've got the list, and Ralph Ralph made the list and sent it to me. And uh, like I said, I'll send it to you. Okay, very good. Of all the clubs that have not been certified or, or done an MOU uh, for uh, grants. Wonderful. Because that's the other big thing, I think, between now and the end of the year. Okay. Well, anybody else? Anything's coming up in your club that you uh, want to share with us and maybe generate some support for? But we, we will have our wine and cheese tasting festival in Bargetown this year on June the 10th. We got squeezed out of our normal date, which was usually the first Saturday in June. It'll be the second Saturday in June. And uh, and I forgot, you know, we've got a new uh, distillery down there that brings in pretty good uh, talent and uh, we decided not to move it off the 10th when we heard that uh, uh, we have a country music star coming down to, uh, uh, I guess it's Southern uh, Nelson County there. They have a, a fairly new, uh, I guess a fairly new com community there of people that, you know, have a good time. And like I said, that's gonna be at the same time. But again, there, you know, two different types of clientele. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll still have our uh, wine and cheese. Hey Nancy, a, a bit of news and not necessarily a bit of uh, good news. Unfortunately, we are gonna be losing the East Louisville Sunrise Club here shortly. Oh, really, Michael? Yes, Yes. 
that most most of their members are going to be coming over to the suburban club and joining us over there. They yeah, uh, they have just hit a wall with nobody wanting to step up and become president again. And uh, Bob was saying his time up was up. He had en enough uh, terms as the club president. Because <laughs> he's done it for numerous years. Yes. Yes. Well, you never love to see, you never like to see a club give up their charter. But if the Rotarians continue to serve through other clubs, um, mm -hmm. you know, the district's still in good shape because you still what, have, what, you still well, have the people engaged. Well, I, that's what I told them I, that I didn't want to lose any Rotarians in the process, but whatever club they joined, I could not promise them they would not be asked to step up to president. <laughs> That's in a small club, okay? <laughs> it's going to happen at any club. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, and you know, Michael, the Passport Club might be um, an option for some of them if they want to stay engaged with Rotary, but they don't want to be tied to uh, regular in-person meetings. Right, so. okay, yep. Thank you for that suggestion because I, I've got one individual over there that's is, is tr due to time-wise, that might be the best option for her. If I can help Tom I'm or Michael, I'm happy to do so. Sure, sure, Rick. And uh, with that, and also, uh, seeing I got you right now, Rick, real quick, should I send that uh, check in for the global now? Last time we talked to you, said hold it for a little bit. Uh, if you don't mind holding it a little further, there's no, okay. no, no rush for it right now. Okay, you, you tell me when. I'll give you a yell. Okay, thanks. Rick, is there anything going on with the International Service Committee you want to um, make the AGs aware of? Uh, we have a pretty good meeting coming up April the 12th on uh, the second Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we'll have a, a presentation from the uh, uh, Appropriate Technologies Consortium that has been doing, has, has been helping uh, Mayan women in Guatemala get started providing solar power for their homes so their kids can study, do their homework at night. We will also have a presentation from the Rotaract Club of Berea College, which is trying to raise money for a, uh, a, a library in Kenya. They're not doing it as a global grant. They're basically just asking for club donations, mm -hmm. but they're a pretty sharp group and well worth uh, looking at. Well, it sounds like an inter that that will be interesting. Your your committee meetings always are, um, and you okay. fill them with. with I, I can see Lee has signed on, so that I'm going to need to stop this recording on this on this one. Who needs to receive it besides you, Nancy? Um, why don't you send it to me and maybe to Lee, and then we can send it out to any of the AGs that weren't able to be with us. Okay, you got it. <laughs> 